Which is better, the Samsung Galaxy A03s or the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, and we're going to be comparing these two budget offerings from Samsung. Now, both of these phones were recently launched, and they're also both available at a variety of different carriers in the US. They're also offered factory unlocked, and they're also offered at a variety of different regions all around the world. Now, I will be leaving a bunch of different links to these phones in the video description. So to see the most up-to-date pricing and availability, definitely take a look at those links. Now, while these phones do share quite a bit in common, the A13 5G is essentially better in every way compared to the A03s. So this phone really is one tier higher, but I figured this comparison would be worth making considering that a lot of people might be wondering if they should get this phone or spend a little bit of extra money and get this phone instead. Now at first glance, these two phones do appear to be very similar. They both do have water drop notches up top. They also both do have thicker bottom bezels compared to the other bezels. And they both feature 6.5 inch displays. So they both have very large displays here, which is definitely great for content consumption. Now, they also both feature 720p displays, but the display technologies used on both phones are a little bit different. So with the A03s, we have a PLS LCD display compared to a PLS TFT display with the A13 5G. And then another big difference between these two displays is that the A03s has a 60 hertz display, whereas the A13 5G has a 90 hertz display. And essentially with that 90 hertz display, navigating around the phone is gonna appear a lot smoother because the display is running at a different refresh rate. So essentially it gives the phone a little bit more of a premium feel compared to the A03s. Now, as far as PPI goes, both phones do have a PPI of 270. They both feature 20 by nine aspect ratios, so a more narrow but taller form factor, which is pretty consistent with most devices that have launched in the last few years. And with the A03s, we have an 81.8% .8 screen to body ratio compared to an 81.1% screen to body ratio with the A13 5G. Now both of these devices do feature five megapixel front facing cameras and definitely check out my dedicated review videos on both of these phones as I do have a variety of different photo and video samples in those reviews so you can get a better idea of the differences of the photo and video quality between these two devices. Now storage is certainly a major difference between these two phones as the A03s has 32 gigabytes of internal storage whereas with the A13 5G, we're getting double that at 64 gigabytes of storage. Now, both phones do feature micro SD card expansion, which is really good as you'll be able to offload photos and videos, for example, to free up some of that internal space. But I will say in general, and I mentioned this in the review, but 32 gigs with the A03s really isn't enough for most people out there. You can definitely survive with it, but it's probably inevitable if you use your phone pretty often that you will eventually fill up that space. And the micro SD card does help, of course, because you can offload content, but just having 64 gigs of internal storage in the uh, temperature is 64, but having 64 gigs of storage with the A13 5G really was a great decision by Samsung. Now, neither of these two devices feature wireless charging, but they both do feature fingerprint sensors on the power buttons. So we'll give that a try with both of these phones right now, starting with the A03s. Pretty fast and responsive. Try it out one more time. Yeah, so pretty fast and responsive there. And then we'll try it out with the A13 5G. Oh, took me four tries to get it. Two tries that time. And two tries that time. And I mentioned this in my review of the phone and hopefully they can fix this in a software update unless it's just something unique to me. The fingerprint sensor in the A13 5G is not nearly as good as the A03s, which is pretty surprising considering that this phone is supposed to be the more premium device of the two. But I've already added in my thumb multiple times in the uh, fingerprint sensor area in the settings. And despite that, it still isn't necessarily that responsive or accurate. It's really been pretty frustrating with this phone. Now, I wouldn't call it a total deal breaker because again, maybe it's something unique to me, but I did want to point that out here. Now, thankfully, both of these devices also feature face unlock. So technically, you can use face unlock in conjunction with the fingerprint sensor and the device will go with whichever one authenticates first. 
So if you pick up the phone and it already picks up your face, even before you tap on the fingerprint sensor, then you're already good to go. So that's at least good. I'm glad that we do have multiple methods for accessing the device. So that's definitely good and I appreciate that we do have multiple methods for accessing either of these two phones. Now taking a closer look at the cameras on these devices, they have similarities and differences. As far as the actual features go, they are pretty similar in the sense that we have one camera that's the main camera, we have a macro camera and a depth sensing camera. Now on both of these phones, the macro and depth sensing cameras are two megapixels, but the biggest difference is the main camera, because with the A03s, the main camera is 13 megapixels, compared to a 50 megapixel main camera with the A13 5G. So going from 13 megapixels to 50 is quite a big difference there. In both phones, as you probably could imagine, because they have the depth sensing camera on the back, do support portrait mode for the back camera, but also with the front cameras. Now here's how the cameras look on both devices, and again, to see actual photo and video samples from them, definitely take a look at my dedicated review videos that I've done for these phones. But here's how the camera interfaces look on both devices. Then from here, you can go to the More tab on both phones, and you can access the macro cameras. So with that, you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail. We can then flip around to the front-facing camera on both phones, and there's me right there. We can then switch over to portrait mode to get those blurred out backgrounds. So we definitely have a variety of different camera features in both of these devices. Now certainly compared to more advanced Android phones and the more top of the line options, you're not getting nearly as many abilities with these phones, but the good news is that the photos and videos that these phones take are at least good enough to be worth keeping and to post on social media. Now the biggest difference between these two devices definitely has to be the processor and RAM. Now, as far as RAM goes, we're getting three gigabytes of RAM with the Galaxy A03s, and we're getting four gigabytes of RAM with the Galaxy A13 5G. But the biggest difference is the processor. So both of these phones do have MediaTek processors. With the A03s, we're getting the MediaTek Helio P35, and with the Galaxy A13 5G, we're getting the MediaTek Dimensity 700 5G processor. So as the name does imply, the A13 5G is the only phone of these two that does support 5G connectivity. So definitely when it comes to future-proofing your phone and having a phone that will give you the most longevity, it's definitely good to have a 5G device because that is the way that things are heading. So eventually 4G will be a thing of the past. Not that that's gonna be happening anytime soon, but at least with the A13 5G, you'll be able to connect to your carrier's 5G network. But also when it comes to the two processors, the performance that you're getting from them is quite different. So I did run a Geekbench 5 benchmark test with both phones here, and you can see that the scores really do speak for themselves. So with the A03s, I got a single core score of 174 compared to a single core score with the A13 5G of 466. So that's significantly more compared to the A03s. And then multi-core scores are also a bit better here with the A13 5G. So what I recommend doing is running the Geekbench 5 benchmark test on your current phone and then compare your scores to these scores to get a better idea of whether or not either of these phones are gonna be a performance upgrade to you. Of course, these numbers really don't mean anything unless you're comparing them to your existing phone. So definitely do that and see where your current device stands in comparison to these two options. But all in all, without a doubt, the A13 5G has a much faster processor than the A03s, and that's before even taking into account the fact that this phone will connect to 5G and this one won't. Now with both of these phones, they both offer 5,000 milliamp hour internal batteries, which are very large batteries. So expect to get very good battery life out of both of these phones. And they both feature 15 watt fast charging. So you will be able to recharge them pretty quickly. Now, both of these devices are made out of plastic besides the displays, which are glass, but the materials on the back are a bit different. Now I'm definitely a bigger fan of the material on the A03s. It's kind of this wavy, matte finish compared to the A13 5G where it's a bit more plain and boring. I am glad though that at least with both phones the finish is a matte finish because they don't really pick up too many fingerprints. But I will say that if I had to pick between one of the two materials, the A03s does have kind of the cooler, better looking material on the back. Now taking a look at the left side of both devices, they both have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. 
Then on the right side of both phones, they both have volume up, volume down, and the fingerprint sensor that's also the power button. Then up top here, both phones have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of both devices, it's nearly identical with them both having a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a microphone, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, and we have the speakers on both. And both of these phones do have just one speaker when it comes to listening to audio. So these phones do not let audio out of the earpiece when it comes to watching videos or listening to music, for example, the earpiece is only used for phone calls, which is a bit different compared to some of the more premium Android phones out there where you do actually get stereo audio. And then taking a look at the back of both phones, they do have different looking camera modules, but honestly, I don't really care a whole lot about the differences in design. They both have the same objective, which is taking photos. So in general, the A13 5G does have the better cameras of the two. So that's what I care about more. So in conclusion, which of these two devices is the better option of the two? Now, of course, when it comes to just the devices, the A13 5G is the better device, of course. It's supposed to be the better phone. It's a tier higher than the A03s, so of course, this device is better than the A03s. But it really comes down to the various promotions that are being offered. So for example, you might walk into a carrier store and the A03s is being offered for free, whereas next to it on the shelf might be the A13 5G, but you might have to pay full price for this phone. So if it comes down to that, then I would go for the A03s. Or your carrier also might be running a much better deal with the A13 5G compared to the A03s. So it really comes down to the various deals that are being offered by your carrier and what your budget is. So on its own, both of these phones are good options, but hopefully this video helped clear up the differences between them so that you can better decide which one to go for. But this is my comparison of the Samsung Galaxy A03s versus the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G. Hope you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you liked it and sub to the channel, and I will see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.